about move-in today. Hey everybody, we're glad to have you here. Um, and welcome to our move-in 2020 uh, thing. Uh, as we talk about our Facebook Live, we are outside of Reed Hall right now on the north end of campus. And uh, as you can tell, there appears to be a thunderstorm that is trying to roll in with us. So we're going to try to talk really loud and use it. If you can't hear us, please write in and let us know and we'll adjust the mic as best we can um, to go through. So first, I've got my face mask on here. Uh, we're going to start answering a little questions about COVID because we know that that is one of the key things that you want to talk about and you're thinking about. Uh, or maybe you want to forget by this point. Uh, I think we're all kind of at that point too. Uh, but how that's going to affect move in 2020 specifically and, and look a little different. So first of all, I got the face covering here. Um, you have to wear your face covering as you come to campus. It is a requirement from not only the state, but campus as well. So we're excited, you know, that you're going to have that. We're also going to give you some PPE uh, equipment when you arrive. Um, so hopefully that will be here in the next couple of weeks for sure to have that in your room. But bring a face covering with you to go. Um, you'll probably see me pulling on this a little bit to go when I talk really loudly so you guys can hear me. It kind of slides down a little bit and it's extremely windy. So we're going to work with it out here. Um, I remember a couple things just like you were if you were anywhere else. Social distancing as best that you can. Stay six feet apart. Wear your mask. Same message you would hear out in the public, but we want you to be smart when you come to campus as well. Um, once you get inside the building for your elevators, uh, we do ask them for move-in day that you limit the elevators to just you and your immediate family um, to go through. That way we can do, as you come back down, please take stairs as much as you can. If you have a situation you can't take stairs, we'll certainly accommodate you with that request. But if you can take the stairs uh, back down, leave the, the families coming up in the elevator, we'd appreciate that. Um, one thing that we have asked to do on move-in that's a little bit different, this is probably our biggest change with COVID-19 in the past, you pulled up in a parking lot, we've given you 30 minutes to unload your vehicle. Um, we've had some volunteers from the community, from school, different things that would help. This year, because of COVID, um, we're trying to obviously enter, enter, you know, stop the interactions a little bit like we normally would. So we will not have volunteers helping you move your items in your room um, this year. However, um, because of that, we're expanding the time frame that you have within the parking lot from 30 minutes to 45 minutes. So let's just say we're in Reed. We turn into our parking lot here. There will be staff members wearing vests like I have on that will greet you, welcome you into the parking lot. Um, as you come through, you'll park. You can see, just like we have here at Reed, you're really close to the front entrance of the building. So in all of our buildings, we're getting you as close as we possibly can um, to the buildings. On move-in day, you'll have 45 minutes to unload your car, take your items up to your room, and then at the end of the 45 minutes, we're going to talk about arrival passes in a second with some great information there, but you'll move your car at the end of the 45-minute session uh, for there. And then we also ask that you bring only two people with you to move in again to help with social distancing, to help with crowds, to help with elevators, just truly common sense items that you would know. Um, we've gotten a few questions about what if I have a minor with me that, um, you know, it's maybe a brother or sister who can't, um, I don't have anywhere to leave them, can I bring them? Um, we just ask if it's possible, only two people in the building at the same time, if you can, if you can do that with possibility, and if you have a minor, hey, be smart. They need to wear a face mask, use hand sanitizer, wash their hands, same things you would hear at any other location. Um, to go through. But that's kind of what it looks like differently with COVID-19 as we go through our move-in process um, this year. Well, this is a pretty obvious reminder, but please don't bring pets to move-in day with you um, for a couple reasons. One, you can't take them inside the building. Second of all, it's hot in the vehicles and we don't want you to have to leave your pet in the vehicle, in the car while you're moving your stuff in. So please don't do that. Uh, please don't bring your pets with you to move in. Dollies and elevators. We kind of mentioned elevators are limited to one family at a time. Um, if you have a dolly, you have a card or something like that that can help you with your items on move-in day, please bring that with you. We have a few that you can check out, but as the semester goes on um, and time goes deeper in the day, we just have a limited amount. We can't handle every single person at move-in. So please bring your own cart, dolly, moving equipment. That'll help you make your move-in day um, a little bit quicker and easier. Um, our move-in website, um, if you hopefully have been on that during the summer, but movein.uark.edu. Uh, we encourage you to go to that website. The biggest thing we want you to point out there is about a, two weeks ago, we added uh, routes um, and maps to your building. And you may say, 
I don't need that. I got my GPS. What's well, actually right the opposite of that, and we'll use Reed Hall as a great example. Um, if you on move-in day, kind of look out this way. This is Cleveland Street um, and right here. This would actually be blocked off where you would not be able to make a left-hand turn on move-in day. Um, so if you were in the quad or the maples right down the street and you decided to come in from the north on Garland and turn left on Cleveland, you couldn't get in your parking lot because you can't turn left. Um, so please follow the parking maps that are on there. It will get you the most right-hand turns. We jokingly say we want to be like FedEx, right-hand, right-hand, right-hand turn as quickly as possible. That will get you to your lot on move-in day. So please do that. Follow those maps. It'll make your move-in day smoother. Now, let's take Reed Hall. It's another great example of why you need to use the parking map. If you look, you would think that that would be the entrance in, and I'll just come up Razorback, and that'll be it. That is not how you get into Reed Hall. Um, actually, there is a staging area that is back behind the Pat Walker Health Center that will be available for um, students in Reed Hall and students who are in Maple Hill West. They will go through the staging area and then will be released into Maple Hill, into the Reed area. So if you come up Razorback on move-in day from Maple Hill West to Reed to turn in, you won't be able to get in the parking lot unless you came from the staging area and were released into it. So. Little things like that to help. A Dohe's a little bit different because we're parallel parking on a closed street. Lots of little uh, tweaks will happen like that. Follow those move-in maps for us. Um, also want to mention for parking spaces for parents after and before. So if you look at your parking pass that Christopher's got right here with me, on the back of the parking pass you will see um, some QR codes. Um, one will be for Harmon Garage, one for Garland Garage, and one for Lot 56. This is a generic one, so it has all three on it. But if you were on the south end of campus, you would see uh, a Harmon Garage parking permit. If you were in Yoakum or something like that. If you're in the north, you would see Garland on your permit uh, to go through. You can scan this QR code. It will show you where to go park after your 45 minutes have surpassed. Um, and for students, we encourage you to go to Lot 56. The easiest way to remember that, that's the big parking lot south of Bud Walton Arena, north of the Chick-fil-A off of MLK. That'll be a parking lot. We will close the parking lots every single day for the next day of move-in, so that way we can have a great open parking lot for you guys when you get here on move-in day um, to go through. So please make sure that um, you follow these guides and maps. Hopefully this will help you um, to get back. There'll be people in the parking lot who can assist you as well um, as you go through your move-in days. A uh, couple just tip, typical reminders, we don't allow U-Hauls into the parking lot, so do not bring a U-Haul with you to move in day because you will not be allowed into the parking lot with it. U-Haul, um, and then we mentioned U-Hauls, drink water. We're looking at the initial forecast for next week. It's supposed to be in the low 90s and, and no rain, except for maybe Tuesday, so it's going to be a little warm. Make sure you're drinking water, staying hydrated. Common sense items right there. Then right here beside us, and I'm going to walk slowly this way. Um, this is a cardboard recycling area that we have. Every building has one of these set up close to it. Um, and then if we can turn a little bit to this way, you'll see a dumpster. We're right out here by the maples. That'll be an area where you can throw your trash away. So trash will go in dumpsters like that. Recycling will go there. there there's currently nothing in here. Our, our team has already picked it up. But if you do have a cardboard box, please stick it in here, break it down, and put it in the box, and we'll recycle that. Um, we have a company we work with that works with a great recycling program, so we can do that to go through. Um, we've mentioned this before in other sessions that we've done. Check your UARC email. It's very important um, to do that. The day before move-in, we will send you a UARC email. There'll just be some reminders how to check the move-in map, how to do, um, you know, just common sense reminders as you get closer to move-in day. But uh, if there is something that happens the day before on move-in day and we need to adjust a parking route um, or something like that, we would include it in that map. Uh, we would include it in that prior day move-in map, so uh, an email. So please make sure you're checking that because if something changes, that's how we're going to communicate that with you as well. Also, I'd encourage you to follow our social media channels, particularly on Twitter. We'll put in some move-in updates, pictures, and things like that. Um, I remember four years ago, um, we had to alternate some routes during move-in day because we had a gas leak on Razorback and it shut down Razorback. So we had to change all of our move-in routes. So we communicated that through social media um, as best we could. So check that social media, follow that during move-in day. We'll give you some great tips there. Um, weather readiness, we kind of mentioned that. 
Initial forecast looks pretty good for us. A little hot, but no rain. If we do have lightning, we will stop move in um, for the safety of the staff out in the parking lots. Um, so what happens if we get into a delay? We ask that you not drive into the parking lot because we don't want you out in the lightning and weather either. Um, our staff will come inside and then we'll kind of adjust our day and pick things back up and be flexible with you with the Nuvin day. But we ask that please, if there is lightning, please don't come into the parking lots um, that you can stage in lot 56 on the south end of campus or one of the parking garages um, on campus as well until the severe weather goes around. We will keep updated on our website um, to go through so to make sure that if you have any questions about things that to go through with that. Uh, and then right behind us, uh, Christopher is here with us. He's been holding the flag because the wind is blowing so hard it would kill our sound volume. But um, as you turn into your lots, you will see a flag like this. Now, if you notice on your parking pass that you received, um, it's a different color. Your color will match this map, this flag that as you turn into your parking lot. So that will help you as you come into the edges of campus. You will also see signs that will have arrows that are color coded um, that will help you. So basically follow your color code. It will get you to where you want to go if you happen to get lost on move in day. Um, with your arrival pass, take this hang tag, put it in your vehicle in your hang tag. You should have gotten two in the mail, um, one for you and one for a parent. If the phone number on the bottom of yours is incorrect, um, please just print that in for us. That would be super helpful um, to go through. So a student at Reed would have a pink pass, correct? Yeah, so a student at Reed or Maple Hill West would have this color uh, pass. And a diamond. To go through. And for also if for, color, for color issues as well, we have some uh, specific shapes Simple. as well to help you out with, with that uh, as we go through. So. Uh, check those flags, check those colors as you're coming to campus and follow the maps. If you follow your move-in maps, you'll get in very quickly. It'll be really, really efficient for you and very quick as you get into the parking lot to go. And remember, you'll have 45 minutes to unload your cars. That doesn't mean you have 45 minutes in your room. That just means you have 45 minutes to unload and take things to your room. And we jokingly say you can stay in your room as long until the student, until your student kicks you out. So if you're a parent watching that, until the, par the student tells you to go, uh, you can stay in the room as, as long as you would like with your student. You just have 45 minutes with access to the parking lot to get your items up there. Uh, the last thing I want to emphasize, I'm gonna really going to do it for the Reed, uh, Reed folks here. Uh, please come at your arrival time. So if your arrival time is 9.15, please come at 9.15. Do not come at 8.30. Try not to come at 11 o'clock. Come at 9.15. Um, we, we have been very, very strategic about how we have maximized space this year to keep people distance, to keep a maximum number of people in the building at times. So if people show up and do what you're supposed to do um, at the right times, it'll be very, very limited to the contact. We've minimized that contact as best as possible, but please come at your arrival time because otherwise you're just creating really chaos for us because we have people coming at the wrong times that they didn't sign up for. So if you do that, your move-in day experience will be good and you'll also make the experience for others as well. So, We actually have a couple questions from people about the arrival passes. So Kelly asks, what if we have not received the arrival passes yet and we are scheduled to arrive next Tuesday? Okay, so the arrival passes, we were told by the company who printed them and mailed them that they should be here at or before tomorrow. So if you haven't gotten yours yet, you it may come in the mail tomorrow. It could come um, Saturday, different. I guess tomorrow is Saturday, but or Monday, you should get it. We've talked to multiple people within the state of Arkansas. We talked to someone from Maumelle the other day, uh, someone else from East Arkansas. They had gotten their passes already, um, so hopefully yours should be coming any any day in the in the mail. If it doesn't, if you don't get it before move in, don't panic. Um, come to your lot at your arrival time and we will give you a blank temporary one that we will fill out. So if it doesn't get here, gets lost in the mail, which happens from time to time, don't worry, you can still get in your lot on move in day. Or you're driving from Texas and you just get halfway here and you're like, oh no, I forgot the arrival pass. Not the end of the world, we'll let you in your lot. But if you have it, this is really helpful. This really helps our UAPD officers who are out because they can help you if you get lost. They see colors and they can know where, what route to send you. So it's super helpful. That's great. Um, and Becky asks, can students park in the Garland garage after unloading if they have a parking sticker? Um, students, if they have the Garland garage sticker, um, 
That's a good question because typically in the Garland garage is has been open. Um, we would encourage you to go to lot 56 if you can for the first few days because that's where our parents are going to park um, for a move in. We anticipate the resident reserve lots will open back up Saturday evening around 630. Um, so that should we should be done with move in around 6 or 630 on Saturday evening and we will not protect the lots past that point. Um, so if you are, if you have a resident reserve lot after your move-in process, Saturday about 6.30, the lot should be open for you to come back in and, and start using your resident reserve passes. Great. Um, I think that's it for the questions. Did you have any closing thoughts? So, hey, we're excited to have you here. Um, you know, our masks may be falling down and things might be a little bit different this year. Um, as we move in, but we're excited to have you here, we, you know, with classes, sometimes some of your classes may be online, some different things. One great thing that's great about it is you still get to have the community experience in housing, and we're so excited to have you here. We have spent the entire summer walking through many, many planning station, stations and different things as we prepare for move in, um, and so we're excited to have you here, and we look forward to it. Follow those parking maps, and, and uh, you, and bring your arrival pass, and show up at your time, and you will have a great experience on move-in day, and we're excited to see you. All right. Well, thank you, Billy. Uh, you want to give us a wave? All right. Bye, guys. Bye. See you next week.